take two aspirin and call me in the morning? Wait, maybe not. Yeah. We're going to talk about kidney disease and anti-inflammatory medication. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talk with Docs. We brought Dr. Pandea back to talk all about this. Welcome. Thank you. And what we're going to talk about is not only anti-inflammatories and their causing of the kidney disease, but if you have existing kidney disease, is it safe for you to take a small amount or any amount? We're going to kind of go through all of it. So let's start at the beginning. How do those little anti-inflammatories that are so helpful to us, how do they damage our kidneys? Yeah, so it's a, it, it, there's a number of things that can happen with it, the use of anti-inflammatory agents or NSAIDs uh, with the kidneys. And I know it's important that we want to talk about patients with chronic kidney disease and what the risks are there, but there's a multitude of other things that can happen with anti-inflammatory agents that are maybe completely uh, ig ignored, if you will. I think you're right. Um, so it, it, maybe I'll just go through some of that. If Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So first you can get electrolyte imbalances with anti-inflammatory agents. So things like low sodium value or high potassium, and the high potassium uh, can cause rhythm problems in the heart. So yeah. you have to be careful of that. Um, your risk factors for that depend on what other medications you're on. And for any of these things, how far down your kidney disease is. So we'll, that's for all of these sure. things. The other thing is it can cause salt and water retention, yeah. which can have a relevance, one, for developing or worsening high blood pressure, usually around the range of three to six millimeters of mercury for your okay. systolic blood pressure. Doesn't seem like a lot, but when you look at um, studies, what we call epidemiological studies or studies of populations, uh, you know, three and five millimeters of mercury has implications from a, from a, public health standpoint on yeah. cardiovascular risk. That's also considered a successful treatment if you drop it five millimeters, That's so that right. kind of speaks to it as well. Right, and so along with the with the blood pressure effect, if you have a tendency towards having volume accumulation, if you have any degree of heart failure, the anti-inflammatories can actually promote salt and water retention, yeah. can cause swelling, shortness of breath, and it's one of the causes of, of precipitating uh, heart failure visits to the emergency room. Right. It's a commonly asked question if you're, if you're taking any of these anti-inflammatory agents. So electrolyte abnormalities, salt and water retention, and then of course there is the development of acute kidney injury that can happen if you're sensitive to anti-inflammatory agents. So you know, the, the, the NSAIDs, you know, essentially block the effects of prostaglandins right. in the kidneys. And when you have lower levels of GFR, then you actually become a little bit more prostaglandin dependent and when you to maintain your filtering function and your flow. And when you block that with NSAIDs, your kidney function can drop down. Again, the development of acute kidney injury is really quite relevant on one, if you've had a history of it before, yep. two, if you're on other medications that can affect mm. the flow in the filtering units, yep. heart failure or cirrhosis or something called nephrotic syndrome, which is a kidney related disease where you spill a ton of protein. These are things that put you at a higher risk of developing acute okay. kidney injury. Now like how much anti-inflammatory are we talking about? Like if I take a couple of ibuprofen because I got a headache because I've been working too hard or if Brad takes a couple of ibuprofen because he's dealing with that bad hangover. Wow. Like are just these two pills wow. gonna, gonna harm us or is it like regular use like over a week or two weeks or yeah. months? Yeah, no, so so great question. You really want to get to the chronic kidney disease part. So we're, <laughs> get, we're, gonna, get, we're gonna get the yeah. chronic kidney so, uh, so the studies that are that ha that were looked at originally are fraught with like a lot of confounding errors or things that you can't basically you can't analyze them real po uh, properly, and the number of patients with let's say more severe kidney disease are far and few between. Right. Okay. So uh, there's a great review about five years ago that put some practicality okay. to all of this stuff. Yeah. And it says, so if you have stage one or stage two kidney disease, which means your GFR is above 60, mm -hmm. you have no added risk of developing chronic kidney disease than the general population. Okay, sorry, GFR okay. 60 is just below what we consider like a normal limit of yeah. filtration of your right, kidneys. Right. We talked about this in we a previous a video. We have video that talks about this. And, and when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about like stage one and stage two kidney disease, which where your GFR is above 60, it means you still could have kidney disease by way of having protein in the urine or other urinary abnormalities. And so you still, if you're deemed to have kidney disease, no different than the general population in terms of the risk of anti-inflammatory use at the prescribed doses. Okay. And, and what that risk is though is like, I guess I think that's what Paul's really asking. So if you have normal kidneys or even just slightly below normal kidneys, 
do we know what a safe amount of NSAID is? Yeah, so if you, first let's talk about stage three kidney disease. Okay. So now we're like less than 60. It's easier okay. to go back, yeah. So if we're like now less than 60, what we deem as safe is if you take short courses yeah. of anti-inflammatory agents, like let's say five days for an attack of gout, okay. your risk is of having any kind of progressive kidney disease with a short course of anti-inflammatory agents is negligible. Okay. Basically okay. no risk, okay? okay? So you have an acute injury, you have to take anti-inflammatories for five days, yep. and you five and done, your risk is low. Okay. Now, if you're at stage three, particularly if you get further down into stage three B, and you're gonna have chronic use. So these are all the patients, patients that are coming yeah. in yes. to see you guys, yes. right? Yes. And they're like, okay, when am I gonna need my joint replaced? What yeah. can I do? The problem is, as we talked about these studies, is that we say, lots of people say, full stop, you can't use them. It's gonna yeah. hurt your kidneys. And I have colleagues that do that. The trouble is, is that what's the alternative? Right, they're suffering. That, or you go to, then you get to opioid Right. Yeah. medications which have obviously all of their side effect profile that right. you have right mm -hmm. so as a practical matter you know the better your kidney function is the more tolerable you are going to be to anti-inflammatories if you were to have chronic use of anti-inflammatories i think it's important to have your blood work checked okay. you just your routine biochemistry your potassium your sodium your creatinine in sort of three to four weeks okay. in that type sort of time frame okay. to make sure that you don't have any significant um, uh, electrolyte abnormality, number one. And number two is that you're not overly sensitive to the prostaglandin blocking oh, effects of the anti-inflammatory, okay? Good. And, you know, some of this relates to the, your physician looking at your profile and saying, well, are you on some of these other agents that we talk about using for chronic kidney disease, like the RAS blockers or the Flozins, right? Or the, the finerenone, the, the non-steroidal MRAs. These things can affect the hydraulics, if you will, okay. and that coupled with then blocking prostaglandin effects in the kidney can cause your kidney function to decline. So just a one check, okay? And then it depends on how long you're gonna be on it and mm -hmm. having periodic checks of your kidney function more than, all, more than uh, just like the annual visit, sure. depending on where you are. Now the safe amount is like anything in medicine, the lowest amount for the lowest duration. Right, the lowest right. effective dose for the shortest period of time. Okay, yeah, yeah. right. Sure. And so it's it's hard to say, but what I what will tell you is that if you get to stage four disease, so your GFR is less than thirty, you want to use these with caution. Mm -hmm. You're still likely okay to get away with the five days. Okay. But you should have somebody with you should have a physician with eyes on it and yeah, having okay. having blood work. And we usually say avoid it altogether if you're stage five or less than fifteen. Right. All right. So stage five, avoid stage four, proceed with caution. Mm -hmm. Is stage six when you have zero function? Is there a stage six? Or There's no exist? stage. No. But I mean, if you're on dialysis, does it matter then? You're like, my kidneys are gone. Yeah. This one goes you're, to 11. Then you, can you take yeah. anti-inflammatories then or no? Uh, no. No, you can't. Because, because I thought, okay, well, my kidneys are well, gone. Well, because what we haven't, toast. what we don't talk about, what we haven't talked about, because this is a kidney talk. Yeah is the GI side effects. Right. Yeah, no, no, I mean, just specifically and from a kidney point of view. No, no, but yeah. it, and when you ask about dialysis patients, right. dialysis patients have upwards of, let's say, five to 10 times more the bleeding risk okay. than you do. Okay, And so we say, so no. again, so, okay, that's good so this is like, so this is now beware uh, yeah. in terms of the use. Right. Yeah. And so we really frown on that, along with, you know, you still get, you can still get problems with heart failure, et cetera, related to these things. So, uh, under 15% or uh, stage five, forget about it. Get it. If you're stage four, basically between 50, 15 and 30 yeah. uh, for a GFR, then just proceed with caution. Short, Short course, courses. Close monitoring. Yeah, avoid the chronic use of that okay. but, and monitor. And if you're in stage three, which yeah. is between 30 and 60, you're likely, at, you're not at any greater risk for short courses. And if you have to do a lot, if you're doing prolonged courses of anti-inflammatory agents, you should be monitored. And, and are we talking like yearly monitoring, six months monitoring? How, like, how do you know? Like, or they take the whole thing. You got high blood pressure. Maybe you have borderline diabetes. Your kidney function is still okay. We just watch you closer. Yeah. So I think this, probably if you looked at the problem list that somebody might have, the more okay. problems they have, the more frequently you should monitor. Right? So let, let's give you an example. Let's say you have a 60-year-old person with a GFR of 50. Okay. Yep. Um, no protein in their urine, and they're wanting to take chronic anti-inflammatory agent use for whatever reason, right? 
then you say, okay, well, let's check their blood work. And they're not on any other medications. Okay. Okay, let's make it clean, completely clean. Then you should check their blood work in two to four weeks. Yeah. And then uh, you probably want to say, okay, let's just have a check in six months, make sure everything's okay. okay. Now, hopefully they're not going to need, we've got to treat the underlying disease and yeah. see if you can't yeah. get off of it. Yeah. But yeah. you should say, okay. But now let's say you have somebody who's got high blood pressure, has got some cardiac disease, that's not a patient you want to wait six months to see what's happening, right? Right. You might want to say, okay, we'll check it in two to four weeks, and then yep. let, let's get another touch point in three months. If it's not affecting you then, then maybe we'll do another six months after that. So some of the cheap, it's easy, it's real. If you say, I mean, the, the blood, work, the cost of blood. Work and just to be right. clear, we're talking about oral anti-inflammatory right. use, systemic anti-inflammatories. You're okay with topical anti-inflammatories yeah. in these settings? that's right. So we, that's not included in this discussion? No, topical we use a lot, including in our dialysis patients. We don't deem that you have any real substantial systemic absorption, so not if, not going into the bloodstream, yep. not affecting your organs, in particular not affecting your kidneys. That leads into this one. What about injectables? We inject a lot, primarily the knees, is where most of our cortisone is injected into the knees. Well, cortisone's not a non-steroidal anti No, I mean, what about, how do you feel about depamedrol and, and can you function we no have, issue the, no issue okay no Good. no there's no specific kidney uh, guidance right. uh, other like outside of what you would do in the normal population yeah. okay that doesn't have kidney disease wow there you go and of course this we looked at the effects of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories from a nephrology lens so of course as we alluded to there's bleeding risks there's gi risks ulcer bleeding ulcers Cardiac. other bad things that can happen we know and we talked about that in other videos but today we just want to talk about kidney function and anti-inflammatory use. And that's why we had a great nephrologist here to tell us about this. So we really appreciate you sharing this and helping people out, helping people understand how non-steroidal anti-inflammatories can affect your kidneys. Okay, now, now you know now you know the safe amount or what you should be talking to your family doctor about when it comes to anti-inflammatories and your kidney function. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you know is maybe taking too many anti-inflammatories. Thank you again for sharing your wisdom. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.